fellow sewing enthusiasts. Today, I'm going to show you how I made a stylish yet simple Obi inspired belt using my new Burnett B79 Yaya Han Edition machine. This asymmetrical Obi belt features hidden closures and a tassel rope decoration and a stunning spider lily embroidery on the front panel, an exclusive design of the Yaya Han Edition. The art files for the spider lily as well as the Creator 9 software are included in the Yaya Han sewing machine bundle and you can find the full supply list in the captions. Are you ready to get started? Let's dive right in. First things first, I embroider the gorgeous spider lily design onto my outer fabric using the Burnett B79 Yaya Han Edition. By making a mock-up and measuring myself, I set 6 inches as the max height for the embroidery design. With the size in mind, I started up my Creator 9 embroidery software, opened the spider lily art files, and made alterations to the design. I decided to combine the geometric diamond shapes from this spider lily file with the cluster design of this lily. All I had to do was select the geometric layer, then copy paste it to the spider lily cluster. With the Creator 9, I easily nudged the geometric design where I liked it, mirror flipped it, then resized the whole design to 6 inches tall. I saved the new design file and exported it directly onto a USB stick. Make sure the setup file is also saved on your USB stick. At this point, it was time to set up the embroidery module. Be sure to follow instructions and use the recommended stitch plate, bobbin case, presser foot, and needle. It is also important to set the machine on a stable surface and leave enough space for the embroidery arm to move around freely. Once my machine was set up, I plugged the USB stick to the side of the B79 and navigated right to the embroidery file. The touch screen can show you exactly how the design looks down to each layer and thread color. You can make final alterations here, such as resizing the design up to 20%, tilting it, and moving its position. There are a ton of ways to edit embroidery files directly on the machine, so definitely check out the manual and learn all the features. I used a tightly woven soft polyester fabric for the outer belt layer because it embroiders very well. Following the recommendation, I used a large hoop to hoop up my fabric and stabilizer. Be sure to leave enough space on either side to cut out the belt panel later. Once the hoop was attached, it was time to let the machine do the work. I used a generic embroidery bobbin thread and four colors of red and fuchsias for the spider lilies. In less than an hour, it finished my gorgeous spider lily embroidery. I'm always so fascinated by the magic of an embroidery machine and love watching it bring a design to life. With the embroidery finished, it was time to cut out the fabric and actually make the belt. First, I tore away the stabilizer on the embroidered front piece and cut it out using the included belt pattern. Then, using the front as a directional guide, I cut out the three other pieces. My belt lining is a corset cotille, but you can also use duck cloth or a medium weight woven fabric. To add even more stability to my belt, I cut a piece of interfacing and ironed it to the inside of my lining fabric. Then I placed the pattern on the inner facing in the same direction as the outer layer and cut out four lining pieces as well. Be sure to mark your pieces so you don't lose track of them. Since the B79 Yaya Han Edition is a dual machine, it only took a minute to change it back to sewing mode. Next, I pinned the outer layer following the notches. 
and sewed them together. Then I repeated the process for the lining, pin, then sew. And I made sure to iron all the seams flat. Before sewing the two layers of the belt together, it was time to install a red bias tape piping. I used a standard bias tape piping that came in a two and a half yard package. It is just enough for this belt. This is a great technique for making belts look finished. To start, I opened the seam on the piping and cut off about half an inch of filler. I chose to install the piping on the lining, which is stabilized by interfacing and therefore easier to sew on. So, I measured 5 eighths of an inch from the edge as the seam allowance. I pinned the piping to the end of the belt and slowly went around the entire perimeter. To round corners, simply clip the bias tape and pin. Easy peasy. This is a critical step in the project, so take your time pinning the piping around the entire belt. Now was time to sew on the piping. I removed the standard pressure foot and attached the zipper foot on the left side. I lined up the zipper foot to the edge of the piping and sewed along the raised line, getting as close as I could. Once I've sewn all the piping and came back around to the beginning, I cut off the excess length and tucked the piping end into the open bias tape, like a snake eating its own tail. This gave me a near seamless binding. With the piping sewn on, I now could attach the lining to the outer layer. I laid the two pieces with right sides together and pinned them carefully. Make sure to leave a six inch opening along the edge for turning the belt right side out. I followed the stitch line for the piping and used the same zipper foot and settings to sew the belt layers together, except that six inch opening. After clipping the corners, I carefully turned the belt right side out, pulling the piping along the corners and edges. Lastly, I pressed the belt with steam so it laid nice and flat. It was such a satisfying feeling to see the belt come together. To give the belt an even more polished look, I edge stitched around the perimeter using the edge stitch foot included in the accessories pack. This is one of my favorite and most used sewing feet ever. Here you can stitch over the six inch opening and closing the belt completely. Just look how close you can get and how straight the stitches are. Now it was time to hand sew and finish this belt. I tried on the belt by wrapping it around me and marked closure points on the top and bottom using chalk. Then I hand sewed snaps as well as hook and eye onto the belt. I made sure the stitches were invisible on the outer layer. For the finishing touch, I opted for a tassel rope hand stitched along the center of the belt with tassels on both sides of the embroidery. It required some adjusting and pinning, but I really love this look. I used flower beads to add visual interest to the corners. You can of course decorate the belt however you like, with ribbons or trims or ties. Be creative. That's it folks. This is how I made a beautiful Obi inspired wrap belt that is unique, stylish, and sure to turn heads. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did and wish you tons of fun with making your own fashion Obi belt. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more fun and creative sewing projects. Until next time, happy sewing.